The ability to connect to the internet opens up a lot of possibilities and you can build a variety of applications once you know how to do that. In this project, we'll learn how we can connect to the internet using a Python library called requests and see how we can integrate this into Tkinter applications. Once again, the request library is big. Therefore, we learn only to the extent necessary. You can explore this in more detail from this URL. So, there are broadly two ways of connecting to the internet using this library. And we'll see both of them in this project. First, let's install the request library using the pip command. So, pip install requests. And now that we have installed the library, let's see how we can connect to the internet. This is the first and easiest way to access content from the websites that doesn't require any authentication. For example, let's see how we can access data from Wikipedia. So let me copy this URL and I'm going to open the Python console. So the first thing is to import the library in order to use it. So import requests and let's now create a variable and name it response. And let's assign the Wikipedia request to it. And if I type requests and a dot, as usual, we see a lot of methods associated with this module. Let's use this get method and let me paste the Wikipedia URL that I have in my clipboard. Let's hit enter and there are no errors. This means all is good so far. And we can test if the connection has been established or not by using the status code method. So we get this number 200. This means everything is okay. If you get a different message, something in the range of 400, then it means we are not allowed to access the data, at least using the requests module. So these are the HTTP response codes. If you already know about web development, then you will understand this easily. So now that we have established a connection, we can use this response object to get some data from the Wikipedia website. And again, this response object has a lot of methods that we can use to extract data from the websites. Let's use this URL method to get the URL of the website that we are trying to access. So there you go we get the URL of the Wikipedia website. And let's use the text method to get the text of the website. So response.text. And we get a whole lot of text and all of this data is in the form of HTML. And we can see all the HTML tags here. And if you wish to extract the data between these HTML tags, you can use HTML parsers like beautiful soup for example which can be used to scrape the data from the internet and remember not all websites allow us to scrape data for example if you try udemy.com instead of wikipedia we get a different status code which means we are not allowed to access the content since the data on udemy is not for free so that's the first and the simplest way to access information from the internet and the second method is to access data from an API. And we'll see how to do that in the upcoming lessons. Alright, in this lesson, we'll work with this Open Movie Database API. And we'll try to access data from this API and integrate this into our Tkinta application. There are thousands of APIs available on the web. And some are free and some paid. And you can use these APIs to add a certain functionality to your own products or applications. So this API provides information about all kinds of movies and we can search them by title or IMDB ID, etc. And the output is generally in the form of JSON, which is similar to a Python dictionary. So let's see an example. Let's search for a movie using the title. And there you go. We get information about the movie in the form of JSON. And we'll access this information using the Python's request library and integrate the results into our Tkinta application. So first we need to register with this website and request for an API key. 
Some API providers may ask you to create username, passwords, etc. But for this, we don't need to do any of that. So from this page, use the free option and enter the necessary information. And I have done this already and therefore I am skipping this part. And once the registration is done, you will get an email with the API key. And it will ask you to activate the API key by clicking on this link. So click on this link to activate your key. Inside the email, there is another link. Click on this to see how the sample data looks. So here is it, which contains a lot of information about this movie. This is just an example and we can search for any movie we like. Alright, so that's about the API. In the next lesson, we'll start building the application and we'll integrate these JSON results into our Tikinta application. Welcome back. In this lesson, we'll start creating the movie application. So let's create a new PyCharm project and then I'm gonna create a new Python file movies.py. A lot of aspects of this project are similar to what we have done before. So I'm gonna speed up the process a little bit to save some time. First, let's import the necessary dependencies, takeinter, ttk, and also the request library. Then we need to include the if name is equal to main block at the end like we did before. And we'll write a class once again and let's call this movies db. We also need the init method. And I'm going to include the create widgets method inside this like before. And we'll create this method in a minute. So there are going to be three methods for this class. And let's define all of them first. The first one is the create widgets method. Then we need a method to get the movie data from the movies API. Thirdly, a method to clear the contents. Alright, now let's create some widgets inside the first method. First thing, we need a label to display some text. Then we need an entry box so that users can type and search for a movie. And let's create a button to get the results from the movies API. And for the command property, I'm going to include the get movie method that we have defined below. And lastly, we need a frame to display the movie information. And I'm going to set the grid propagate method to false so that the frame doesn't shrink to the size of the widgets inside it. So these are the widgets we need. Let's now run the program and see how the application looks. Alright, there seems to be an error and I forgot to install the request module. So let me do that now. And now let's run the program once again. And there is our application. So we have a label at the top that looks like a heading. An entry box to search for movies, a button and a frame. Alright. Now that we have this structure, we can add some functionality to this application. Alright, now that we have this structure, we can write some code inside the getMovie method to fetch data from the movie API and display inside the frame. First, we need the endpoint or the URL from where we are going to access the data. Back in the movies DB API, under the usage section, we can find a couple of URLs. The first one is for the data and the second one is for the poster. Let's use the first one and I'm gonna copy and paste this in my code.
Secondly, we need to add some parameters to this endpoint because this URL is just a location of the website itself and it doesn't give us any movie data. So let's create a variable and call it payload. And this is going to be a Python dictionary containing the parameters that we wish to include in the endpoint or URL. I'm going to add two parameters. The first one is the API key, which we got from the movies API after registration. And the second one is the search criteria. If we go back to the website, under the parameters section, we can find various options. We are going to use this parameter T, which can be used to search a movie by its title. You will understand this better when I include this in the program. So bear with me for a minute. Back in the program for the search criteria, I'm going to extract the value entered by the user in the entry box using the method self.entry.get. So this will get whatever the user types in the entry box. And you can add as many parameters as necessary inside this payload dictionary. Check the movies API website for other parameters if required. Alright, now we can create a response object. So requests.get and the first argument is the URL or the endpoint and the second one is the parameters for which the value is going to be the payload. So this will get the response from the movies API. Let's print this in the console so that you will understand this better. Let me run the program and type a movie name in the entry box which is nothing but the search criteria t. So there we see the URL along with the parameters we defined. Let's click on this link and there is our data and I have installed a JSON Chrome plugin and that's why the data is nicely displayed. You can google this and install if necessary. So if we take a closer look at the URL, first we can see the endpoint that we defined. Then the payload are the parameters which are the API key and the search criteria and then the name of the movie that we have extracted using the self.entry.get method. I hope now you understand the parameters that we defined inside the payload variable. So now that we have the data in the browser, we can get this data by calling the JSON method on the response object. So response.json and let's print this to the console so that we can see the results. Let's run the program once again and type the movie name and there we see the JSON in the Python console. And now we can remove this print statement and save the JSON data into a variable so that we can iterate over it and display the key value pairs inside the frame. So the last step in the process is to display the JSON data in our application. If you look at this JSON, there are so many key value pairs and it is also nested in some places as you can see here. And I don't want to display all of these, but only a few important ones. To do this, I have created a list of keys that I want. This list contains the keys like the movie title, the year of release, the genre, etc. And I'm going to paste this in the program. And now we can loop over this list. And for each of the keys inside this list, I'm going to fetch the corresponding value from the movie JSON data. So for each key in the keys list, First, let's get the key and then the corresponding value from the movies JSON object. And we can save this into a variable. So now that we have the data, let's create a label and put this inside the frame. And the value for the text property is going to be the variable that we just created above. And let's define few other properties as well. And lastly, outside the loop, once the user is done with searching a movie, we also need to remove the contents of the entry box 
so that he or she can try once again. So that's all we need to do. Let's test this and see if it works. And let's enter any movie in the entry box. And there we get the results. And if you notice, the entry box is also cleared so that we can search for another movie. There is one more thing that we need to fix. If I search for a new movie again, the data will be displayed, but the previous movie data still exists. So we need to remove this data before we display the details of another movie. So let's do that now. And I'm going to write some code inside the clear contents method to destroy any existing widgets inside the frame. And we need to call this from the getMovie method. So if grid slaves exist, then we can call the clear contents method. So let's test this one. And it works as expected. Lastly, if we type a movie that doesn't exist, obviously we'll run into errors. And now that you know how to deal with all this, I am going to leave that for you to explore and fix the program if you wish to do so. And before I wrap this up, here is a small note on accessing data from APIs in general. The process of accessing data varies from API to API. And as I said before, some providers may ask you for additional authentication and also the parameters or the payload that we pass into the URLs will also change. So you need to read the documentation of the API provider thoroughly before you start building something.